What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the farm. So in this video, you're gonna see us wrap up the water collection system that we're putting together out on the chicken coop. The solar powered water collection system we're putting together out on the chicken coop. So we gotta get some roof panels put on. We gotta get the siding hung on the sides. We're gonna get plumbed from the gutters into the tank. And then we are going to get the electronics hooked up from the solar panel to our inverter slash controller. And then however that's gonna work its way out to the, uh, to the waters out in the, in the coop area. So stay tuned, check it out, enjoy. So with our panels cut to length here, what we're going to do is we're going to slip them into place. There will be two full ones and then we'll put the third one in and we'll be able to use this last truss here to mark where we need to cut the, uh, I guess that'd be a vertical line, cut the vertical line to trim it. And then we can use our piece of uh, flashing that was on down here originally that we took off and it should fit perfect down here on the end. Now our critical thing up here is we want to make sure that we're flush because so we keep this good straight edge. So our cut edge is up here. That'll get covered by a piece of flashing, but we want to keep our good factory straight edge down here and we want to make sure that it's flush with the existing panels and we'll do the same thing working our way down, making sure that all of our seams were sitting exactly flush here at the end. When you're doing metal roofing, it's these specialty screws that have this little rubber grommet at the bottom here. So when they tension down, that rubber grime, grommet kind of splays out a little bit and creates a good seal around the hole so that doesn't become a weak point and leak. Another thing you want to try to do when you're installing these panels, the roof panels, is you want to do the same thing with your screws. Use a tape measure, use a block of wood or something to try to get a good straight line with your screws. And then try to pay close enough attention. You know, if you do them in the center rib, try to do them in the center rib every time. Good luck not screwing up though. There you can see we uh, matched our front edge pretty good all the way down. And while I was up screwing the panels down, Dad screwed up this piece of OSB in here. And we figured we didn't need a nice finished piece of wood in there to cover that wall. So we just used a piece of OSB. Probably going to leave this gap at the bottom just to let a little bit of light come in here. With a clear tank, I don't want to have a lot of sunlight coming into here because then I'll have is issues with algae and stuff growing inside of the tank. So probably going to need a little bit of light so I can see what I'm doing, but... A minimal amount and probably I'm thinking if we do it down here at the bottom that won't be direct sunlight and so that'll be less of an issue and if it does turn out to be an issue with too much light we always can cut a piece and just patch that in down there no problem okay so we're back out here this morning dad has come by once again to give me a hand we are starting to cut down our pieces of t11 sheeting that are going to be the walls out here around our tank area so we're just going to since they're eight foot sheets, we're going to be able to leave them whole. So we'll have one, two pieces here. They are tall enough that we're going to be able to cut the, the roof, um, the angle for the roof, I guess. The sheeting will be able to run all the way up to that. And then our piece of trim flashing will be able to go on the top and cover that end right in. And there will be hardly any waste, which is our favorite thing. So the first two pieces are nailed up on the front. That was super easy because it was just two straight cuts. We squared them up at the bottom to make sure that the bottoms were even. The top kind of hides up under the eave there. I mean, they, they did end up even, but it does hide up in there. 
So now we're gonna start doing these ones on the side. So what dad's starting to do is he's gonna get it plumb over here with, with this face. And then we'll go up on top and we'll use a pencil to scribe a line on the back side, and that will tell us right where we need to make our cut to match the roof line. Cut on that line and we have a perfect match to our roof line. Now we have the side pieces nailed up. You can see, like I said, our piece of flashing that was originally on the end before we built this little, little piece out here. It will just go right back over top and we can screw it right back down and re reuse the same exact piece and it's gonna be the exact right size to butt up with both edges. So we've got our T11 screwed up, going all the way around here. So all we've got left is our door opening. So now what we've got to get figured out is where our hinges are going to go. And we are going to hide them on the back side of the door so it will all get covered up with the trim and everything. So the hinge will kind of be hidden and you'll still be able to tell that it's a door because there's going to be a piece of trim that will run down along it that will kind of break up this wall here but I thought it just looked kind of cool to have the have a little kind of hidden hinge so it'll be here and then the door will mount to to this face of the hinge now you can see what I was talking about with the, the hinges kind of being hidden there'll be a trim piece that'll come down here and hide this and then the portion that the door is hanging off of on the inside is hidden because it's on the inside I thought maybe we were gonna have to cut in a window just to let in a little bit of light, but it's really a lot brighter in here with all the walls on it than I even expected it to be. So, still not quite sure. Probably gonna put a ridge vent on, a ridge cap on. I don't know, it might not be necessary. Worst comes to worst. Could always wrap this in some black plastic just to not let the sunlight come through or spray paint it black. I don't know, we'll, I'll cross that bridge if I need to. And then what we're doing for our trim pieces out here on the corners to cover up our corners is we're just ripping down the individual slats off of the T11 and then just nailing those up as our trim pieces. So there's just a few pieces of trim left to put up. As always, our batteries did not last quite long enough to get done with every little piece of that today. But we got the trim done around the door, got a little latch put on it, just got a couple of other pieces for like the top up here and down the side. So we'll get those last couple pieces of trim work on, and then all that's going to be left to do is to get plumbed from the gutter into the tank, and then to get our um, pump system installed, and get that hooked up to the solar panel, and get the inverter from the panel to the battery to the pump hooked up, which sounds probably a little more confusing than it is, but in the next part of the video that's what you'll be seeing happen so it's been a few days but we're back out here again this morning working on the water collector again we got all of our trim pieces installed all the way around got some hardware put on the door just a little lock put on the door to make sure the door will stay closed and now we are ready to start plumbing in from the gutter into the tank so we're going to get figured out where we need to cut our hole in the paneling on the side here we're going to get that cut out, get plumbed to the inside, and then hopefully get another little gutter piece hung, pitched back the other direction down to our downspout. So we're going to use the whole length of the roof here to feed into the tank.
we got our flange cut in and screwed in and then we got a tight 90 going to our piece of downspout coming in inside here to the tank and now we're gonna cut a hole right there in the top of the tank and that's where we will turn in with this 90 to dump into the tank and then we're gonna use the cap is where we're gonna come out with our pump um, that's gonna go over to the the actual water <laughs> So we got our hole cut here on the tank. We turned in with our 90. And then this is just coming out here. True to form, the scrap piece that I had left, I thought was gonna fit just perfect right here, but it's a little short. So I gotta go get another piece of gutter to finish that part up. But just set this cap here. Didn't screw it or caulk it in or anything. So that's just sitting there. In case we do get some rain over the next couple of days, it will at least force most of the water into the tank. Even if it's not all the water, some is gonna be better than none. Start getting that thing filled up. So really the only big thing left to do is to start to get the electronics hooked up. Get the solar panel down into the inverter, which will go to the battery, which will go to the 12 volt little bilge pump that we picked up, which will pump out to the waterer here and then the waterer over on the other side. So everything will kind of sort of be automated from here on out. Well, it's been just about a week since we've been out here, been able to work on the watering system, but we got the electronics all put together over in dad's workshop this week. So I will show you guys how that is gonna work. So just to kind of go through this step by step, this will run out here up to the solar panel. Our power will come down in, come into our controller unit, and this, of course, it doesn't show it now, but this will show on the display, it will show the solar panel coming in. It will show how much uh, power we're bringing in off of the solar panel. Then we come down out of the solar panel, down to our battery. So it'll be charging the battery. We come off of our battery, comes back up. We come out to here over to this fuse block. So this takes just like little, uh, little car, car battery fuses, these here. So if we ever need to disconnect it, we can just pop the fuse out. Or if some power surge or something were to happen, it will just fry the fuse and not fry the pump. So then out of our fuse block, we come over and we go to our switch. This is a little float switch. So you can see as the float manipulates, it closes or opens the switch loop to our fuse panel. And then this also comes out and will go to our bilge pump that is gonna go down into the tank. And then from there, we're running PEX piping out to both of our waterers that will fill automatically because of the float switch. And then this here is our half inch PEX tubing, which we are gonna use. We'll come out from the pump in there. We got some holes drilled. We'll strap it running across this upper band here. We'll dump into the waterer here. Probably be some sort of little valve so we can choke it down the flow rate. And then it will tee off and continue on down the line, go through the coop. See a little hole there and come down to our waterer on this side, which I still have to rebuild because it froze last winter. So we have our pecs coming out from down here in the little tank room and we're strapped up going all the way down the length of the coop, or the length of the run. We go through the coop into the other run and down to where the other waterer is. And then here now we're working on we're coming off with a T that's gonna come out to a valve. And then this valve here is where I will be able to adjust the fill rate because of course with this one being closer than the one that's down here on the other end of the coop, it'll be a better flow rate here. So we'll have to choke this one down 
so the flow rate will slow down and force the water on down the line to the other waterer down here on the other end. So you can see up in there we got the focus, focus. Well, I think you can kind of see it up in there. We come across the inside of the coop and we come out down here to where the other waterer is going to be. Like I said, I have to rebuild this one because it's split last year during the winter. But yeah, so you say we'll choke the one down there. We'll have to choke the flow rate down to force it down here to this one and they'll both fill up at the same time. If you've never used PEX before, these all these connections take these little compression rings that you use this tool here to crimp them down with, which I'll show you. And now that fitting's on there super snug and there won't be any leaks at this elbow. So I have our first valve set up down here. So we just came off with a T like we had talked about. And then there's just this little valve here that we'll be able to use to choke down to figure out where the flow rate needs to be so they'll both kind of fill at the same-ish rate. You know, they'll never be, you know, at the same level in terms of how much water's been drank out of each one. So it, it's not a big deal if it overflows in some dumps on the ground and stuff. But just to kind of get it close, so that's why that's why we put the valve on here. So we are ready to give it a bump test. Dad has been working on getting the electrics hooked up while I have been getting these fittings put together. Uh, we don't have the other one put on yet, but we're going to go ahead and give the system a bump test and see how it works. So the pump is plumbed down into the tank. There was this lamp cord out in the barn that Dad found that must have been left over from something. So we have a secondary switch on it for now since we don't have the float installed yet. So should be able to just flip that. That will charge the system. And then our float here is hooked up. So as soon as you lift the float, we should get power and you can hear the water flowing. And then out here, you can see we are filling the reservoir. So that's going to wrap up what we're going to get done for today. So what that leaves us left to work on is we will have to get the valve installed down here in the other run. Um, I'm going to have to rebuild another, another little watering system, but that'll be a pretty quick and easy project just out of a couple pieces of PVC. And then we have to get from the solar panel that's on the front into the controller, which will then charge the battery, or if it's drawing enough, it'll just operate completely off of the solar panel. The solar panel up there, we gotta get from that into the controller. And then we're basically done. Oh, and get the float valve installed. So as we've been getting this project wrapped up here, I came to the realization I made a mistake. Did uh? Did any of you guys spot the flaw in my plan? So I had made mention about out here in the run about using a float valve here in the reservoir to regulate um, as this is filling. So when it fills, the float valve would tell the pump to turn off. Well, I wasn't really thinking. So if we did do, had done that float valve in here, you know, if my finger here is the water level, as the water level goes down, as soon as it dropped two or three inches, which isn't a very big volume of water, that float valve would have been telling the pump to kick on and it would have filled up that much water, it would have drank a little, it would have dropped, it would have kicked back on, and it probably would have been firing that pump 15 or 20 times a day instead of, you know, the thought was that in my head it was working that the whole system would drop and then it would fill and the float valve would turn it off. So. For my setup that I have now, that uh, that didn't end up working out. But out here in the the tank collection room, I guess is maybe what I'll call this, the tank collection room out here, we do have the solar panel is all wired in, so that's going out to the solar panel. We're coming in right now, 
So we're drawing 16.8 volts in off of the solar panel. That's here, we're coming down. Shows we're coming into our battery. Our battery is happy. So now all I have to do, instead of operating off the float valve and being automatic, I just have to flip this switch here. And that fires our pump. Run out here real quick. We fill here. And then it carries on down the line. I got this one put together also. Put a new one together down here. And we're also filling, kind of hard to see from here, but got another valve up in there. It fills up the one on this side. So even though the, the waterers aren't gonna automatically fill like I kinda had planned and hoped this was gonna go, this is still significantly easier than what I was doing before. The tank is just gonna passively fill with rainwater. Worst case scenario, I drag a garden hose out here every so often and have to fill it up, which isn't a big deal because I got the big cistern in the barn. So I just drag a hose out here, get this filled up. That's 325 gallons, I think. So that's tons of water. That's weeks and weeks worth of water for the chickens. We're completely off grid with our power out here. So, um, so we're running off either the solar panel or the battery and we have this set up so this can also be a charging station for other batteries. So mower batteries, tractor batteries, even car batteries we could bring out here and we could charge and we could even loop into the system if we wanted to, you know, eventually I would like to get a light or two out here, something, you know, that's switched on the wall that I could get it lit up in here if anything were to ever happen and I need to get out here at night. So this little 12 volt system really turned out pretty slick. I'm really happy with it. Well, guys, that's one more big project. We can go ahead and get checked off the list. My whole goal with most of these big things that I work on out here is to try to get them to be as self-contained, as self-sustaining as possible. I'm kind of like the poster child for ADD. I really am not good at spending a bunch of time focused on one thing. So the more self-contained and self-sustaining I can get these things to be, you know, especially something where, you know, I have to take care of living things, you know, the more it can kind of take care of itself, kind of the better for me personality wise. You know, if I can put less time and effort into that, that's more time and effort that I can spend putting into getting another project started, you know, getting some other animals, building something, working on something else, whatever the heck it is. You know, guys, you guys know that I like to stay busy and I'm kind of all over the place. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about the, the 12 volt solar system or anything, I know I didn't go into super detail about any of it, but if you have any questions about it, make sure you leave that down in the comments for me. You got any questions about other stuff going on out there with the chickens, anything else you wanna see here at the farm, anything else you wanna see me work on here at the farm. Let me know about it. I'm always looking for new ideas. Love putting the content out there for you guys, but not always the greatest at coming up with the ideas for it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hit that, uh, hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Think about subscribing if you haven't already. And until next time, y'all, we will see you.